This video's topic is haberdashery. I can hear you all moving your mouse pointer to the X in the corner of the screen. Stop it. While I'll be talking about gear in this video, let me get two things out of the way. One, while this is a guide on what gear you might want, it's always important to remember what gear you can actually get. In my sample game here, my nearby mid-tier resources are gold and spider silk, with an occasional jaunt into elven or darkwood. If I had been doing my sample gameplay video less for introduction and demonstration purposes, and more for absolute maximum gameplay effect, I would have spent a large chunk of my early game making light armors, spears, one-handed swords, and shields. And two, I won't be going over the Darkwood Spear in detail. Go watch the Combat Tactics video if you want to see that one in action. But there was another thing in the tactics video that I said I'd go over in the gear selection video. So let's do just that, as well as me having to partially correct myself from that video. So, equipment strategy, low strength gear version. Several characters, including decent group mates like the witch and medic, often have terrible strength ratings. While gatherers may be nothing special with a 5 or a 6, medic strength can sometimes go as low as 2 which means you have to figure out what 100 pounds can do if you want your medic to not be the first casualty. To that end, there is a specific combination of armor, one-handed sword, and one-handed shield that can be used by someone with a mere 2 strength. That combination is a shield of dryad wood and gemstone, a sword of gold and gemstone, and a light armor of spider silk and gemstone. Please note that not any gemstone will do. As I will show here, while any gemstone is still lighter weight than any other secondary material, the actual weight reduction from gemstones doesn't happen until you hit ruby. I think I said malachite in the combat video, sorry about that. Feel free to head back to that video and blast me in the comments for it. Let me slide a few things to a new window here for ease of viewing. So, the reason that not any gemstone will do is if you make these three pieces out of any gemstone topaz or lower, they will come out, as you can see here, to a total weight of 101, sadly one pound too high. There are three ways to get around this. One is to score a high quality craft, which will reduce the weight of an item slightly. The second is to substitute the light armor with plain clothing, and the third option is to use a ruby or diamond in at least one of the recipes. I don't like the plain clothes option, as even good material clothes just tend to kind of suck. And while better than nothing, by the point in the game you have enough great materials to consider this, it would almost be a waste to do it this way. The high quality craft is the best way to do it, but also very random. That said, if you have access to a reliable source of materials, you can make them in bulk until you get one. The single time ruby is the most reliably effective method. While you may not have the tech or nearby access to a ruby or a diamond, you only need five to make a sword, and there's a good chance you'll stumble upon that soon enough. And of course, if you have a strength of three, that's more than enough even without the ruby. So, what are some other items that are great and low weight? Well, for gathering tools, a spider silk secondary component will, at worst, have a base weight of 16, and as long as you can do better than straw for the primary, it will be more like 14, craft quality notwithstanding. Also, most jewelry weighs in the single digits, so that's another good stat boost for a strength impaired member. Artifacts can be all over the place. Gemstones and spider silk can also be single digit weights. Whereas stuff with metal can easily weigh more than your sword. One possible other option is a dragon bone artifact, which gives a strength bonus. Though I recommend using that recipe sparingly. 
Dragonbone is good for so many other things, and the medic would probably much rather have a different item on for the medic bonus. But, you know, you had to do what you have to do. Alright, that's enough about gearing your medic. Let me back into the jewelry menu here real fast. And let me show this item, the Small Amber Charm, from making a piece with a primary item of the game's lowest gemstone. And indeed, by using 8 total amber, I have created the game's most effective gathering and crafting jewelry piece. Yes, that's only a plus 2 and plus 1, but it doesn't get any better than this for your gatherers and crafters. It also has this other effect, Concentration, which as I mouse over shows that it gives the first strike capability in Intellect and Hex challenges. And with that as a segue, let me fade to an excerpt from the wiki about skills. I've gone over, multiple times, how useful first strike is in fights. To get it in a direct combat, you need to put on a piercing weapon, i.e. a spear. To get the effect for the other 8 skill challenges, you need to put on a piece of jewelry. Making jewelry as important an item in non-fights as your weapon and armor are for actual fights. There are 8 non-fight challenges and 4 first strike skills, so each skill will give first strike for 2 different challenge types. And, as you can see here, that while most gems only give you a single skill, Diamond gives 2. Now let me fade back to the production menu here. Okay, so you've seen the gathering and crafting charm. Let's make a diamond and diamond ring. You'll notice that I get the two first strike abilities, but a rather poor set of other skills. That's the trade-off for getting first strike. You don't get much else. I can adjust the secondary material to get a bit of something else, but only up to two and only on some choices. This is in contrast to if I make jewelry out of other stuff, where I can get some fairly impressive batches of skills. As for a skills a diamond ring doesn't cover, two of them, hunting and cure sickness, aren't really worth the expenditure, given how far between and generally easy those challenges are. If you're doing a lot of sneaking and physical challenges, then by all means make a topaz or malachite jewelry piece, but I usually don't. I find that, in a long enough game, that having a mix works best. For all of my non-gatherers, I put a diamond ring on one finger for the first strike powers, and a class-relevant skill booster on the other. As for what makes a good class-relevant skill booster, it's mostly the high-tier stuff, but top choices would include Ancient Wood for Magic, Dragonbone for Leech, or Mithril for Tactics. And feel free to put that item in the second slot of the Diamond Ring 2, as long as we're playing the I have infinite of all resources available to me hypothetical game. On to artifacts. They have a major difference from jewelry. In jewelry, both the primary and the secondary material determine what effects the piece has. In artifacts, only the primary ingredient determines the effects. The secondary just determines how strong those effects are. A ruby with string gives a medic of 2, while a ruby with ancient wood gives a medic of 3. I think I could get it up to 4 with mithril if I wasn't one piece short. Artifacts are an item you want to custom make for each character as you get the materials for them. However, I will say that there are some artifacts that you should avoid making unless you are making them as stopgaps or in bulk to gain research points. The ones to not make are the ones based on amber, ruby, elven wood, dark wood, gold, iron, or normal bones. And the reason why not to make them is that there are other artifacts that give not only the bonuses they do, but more on top. As an example, here's the ruby, and you can see it gives medic. However, here's ancient wood. It also gives medic, as well as will. And unlike the ruby, I can even get this one to 4 points without needing mithril in the second part. As always, the wiki is a great source for comparisons. But if you are looking for a few good artifact suggestions, diamond and mithril artifacts each give multiple high quality skill bonuses, and the silver chain's tactics is also a nice choice. I'll wrap this video up by giving a mention to weapon and armor materials. 
For artifacts and jewelry, materials are all over the place, and reviewing the wiki to plan your long-term goals is recommended. But when it comes to weapons, you usually are just after the damage, so that might affect the materials you choose to gather. If you want the best physical damage, then the best material is usually Moonstone, though if the recipe doesn't allow for stone, Mithril is the choice. If you want the best poison damage, then you want a weapon with Ancient Wood. And if you want Life Leech damage, you are going to want to make your gear from Dragon Bone. As for armor, your high strength fighters will probably want a piece that maximizes their survival. That would be heavy armor. You'll get the best result out of using Mithril, and even get a snazzy perception boost if you do. Though if Mithril isn't available, steel and silver are your next best primary item choices. As for what you should use as the secondary material, using even more Mithril will get you the best total armor amount, and even more snazzy perception. But you can also make a case for Dragon Bones, which would add a small amount of lifesteal, Enchanted Bones, which would give a small amount of magic, or a Gemstone, which will reduce the weight somewhat, give you a random effect, and if you use the top Gemstone, Diamond, will give the armor the highest possible shielding rating. Your lower strength individuals I kind of went over earlier in this video. But what about a medium strength guy, say in the 8 to 12 range? They have the luxury of using their armor to equip gear that augments their other skills, using light or medium armors, and if desired, their shield slot. There are two real ways to go about this. One is to play the gemstone lottery, where you make a light armor and or shield out of a strong material first and gemstone second, and then build like 20 of them so that you can take your pick from the bonus skill litter. The other way is to target specific crafting materials for specific, only applicable to armor, skill bonuses. Good choices for that are Dragon Bone and Dragon Leather for Leech, Fur Leather for Dexterity, and by extension Stealth, and Enchanted Bone for Magic. I think that's enough for this video. See you in the next one, which I'm sure I'm going to make, but not sure what it's going to be about yet. Stay tuned as I surprise myself.